Okay, so we played as white in this game. And push through the center as we do normally, developing the knight, pushing through the center, attacking the pawn, grabbing the pawn, and keeping it simple, just capturing the knight, nothing too fancy like we see. And developing the bishop. Bringing the knight out, supporting the pawn, and attacking the knight. So all this is pretty familiar with what we've been practicing within the simplification, within the answer process. And it's x-raying through. X-raying through basically to the bishop and through to the queen as well. It's also looking to bait the pawn down so that it opens space around the king. So it's multifunctioning that one particular move. So the knight moves out of the way, obviously we go for a simple capture, pretty straightforward. So now we're positioning our queen, leaning on this pawn with the bishop, x-raying through to the king. In reality we really want to get this pawn down, so this bishop is actually, it's kind of stopping the pawn from being active at this moment. But we kind of, in our heads, want this pawn to be moving. So what do we do with that? We're also kind of wanting this pawn to actually come down and bait this pawn down so we can take and take. So we get two pawns and then we'd be actually be on this rook. So it's multi-purpose for this bishop, bishop as well, all depending on what the opponent does. So the knight comes down, smaller piece attacking a higher piece, attacking our queen. So we simply move the queen up because we're still liking this position. We're also liking this diagonal as well. If the queen decides to move, if there is some sort of championing of this area here, we can try and get some type of majority rule with our pieces on this area, on the rank, on this file. So they look to get our powerful bishop off the board, so we just grab it. So now we have to move the queen out of the way because they've got the discover check on uh, our queen with the rook. So we can simply push on to the knight, smaller piece attacking a higher piece. And prevention is better than cure. So it's uh, basically saying, well, it's always for the b-pawn. You know they're going to come for the pawn at some point with the rooks. Let's defend the pawns with the pawns so that we don't have to spend time defending them with major or minor pieces. So the knights come around again, so this gives us time and space to actually use the rook for what it's designed for, which is trying to manage, you know, files rather than managing supporting the pawn. So the knight comes down again, the knight's really working hard, it's attacking our cape queen again. So at this moment in time, I'm looking at the board, I'm thinking, not really getting a decent position per se to get a major attack on. And it looks like it's particularly drawish at this moment, for me anyway. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, we just go and attack the um, rook. Because what do rooks like? Rooks like the open files to work with. So that's establishing a brief ownership of that file. If they're looking to exchange off, then the rooks aren't going to stay on there for too long. So the knight comes into the middle. It's basically wanting the pawns to come back in line because it's got double pawns here. We decide on this occasion, no, we're not playing them apples. You can keep your double pawns there. So now they're taking on the other side of the board on the open file. So the rooks are being taken off and quick exchange. So we can grab a pawn, which is unprotected at the moment, but it doesn't mean anything major. It still looks pretty in the game. It felt kind of drawish to me. I'm thinking my king looks covered. If the knight comes down now, Gauge bar's gone crazy here for us. Um, I don't think I saw crazy and knight f2. So it's saying block the um, queen's attack. So knight f2 is what we actually played. So didn't think I was winning though with this particular maneuver. I thought we were playing out for a nice even draw. Even though we'd pulled off a few pawns, um, it wasn't clear. It was, in my head I wasn't thinking plus 4.3. I was actually playing for a draw so the queen comes down oh my god plus 8.8 .8. what is it saying well i looked at all of the type these types of continuations you know 
very briefly you know coming here and then the king just comes down so then what what am i doing with my queen am i coming back down again putting a check on it and i think i was thinking well that is drawish isn't it machines say i'm just going to run through it but that's all i saw king h7 queen e4 check oh it gets the knight oh crikey <laughs> It gets the night. This is where I was tunnel visioned on it being a draw. As I mentioned before, um, as it's showing here, showing basic work when it gets to that, that bit there, I'm like thinking, well, I'm just playing for a draw here. I didn't see any major wins. So in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, I've peeled off a few pawns, but I'm going for the draw, like I mentioned earlier. So I was tunnel visioned on the draw mentality. So when I'd looked at that line of, oh, well, I can put a check here, then I just bounce back again and he's just going to go backwards and forwards. I didn't look even at this knight that I was actually winning the knight. Oh, <laughs> that's what happens in chess when you tunnel vision. Okay, so we pushed the pawn up and they came down with their um, queen. Like I said, I'm playing for a draw. I'm comfortable with my king being able to just bounce up and down. Didn't really see any checkmate positions that the opponent could put on. So we just started bouncing around with the king a little bit. I think there was a, oh, look at that, another opportunity. Um, knight d3. We're taking it away from here. Interesting, so we'll go there. Can't come here, we can't come here to protect the knight. So another case for winning the knight. I wasn't focused on winning anything. I was focused on drawing. So all I was saying was I'm just going to keep moving my king around. So that's what I focused on. Because I knew there wasn't a checkmate position from them. So that's twice in this game I had clear attempts at actually winning. But because I tunnel visioned the draw mentality, I didn't see the wins. I was comfortable in the knowledge I was going to get a draw. So the knight's bouncing and we're just moving the king. And at that point then obviously um, it's a draw. So very interesting game indeed. Simplifying the simplifying of the complications. And sometimes you can oversimplify, which means then you kind of lose out because you become risk averse then. So you're going simple ignorance is bliss type thing well you know hey if i don't do this and i don't do that and i'm going to be happy you know so in this case here tonal vision ignorance is bliss it didn't give us an advantage but it didn't give us a disadvantage because the game was drawn so if you're looking at improving going forward especially for myself it would be looking at is this realistically a draw you know really looking at it I know it's a short game that's the problem with these things these exercises i'm doing here they are short games um if there were longer games i probably would spend a bit more time and look at well is it really a draw and then try and find those advantageous maneuvers so in the shorter games yes you can potentially still try and do that but at the same time if on paper in your head you're saying to yourself well, it will take a while to work out how to get a win out of this. Be comfortable with going for the draw then. You know, it's only you and yourself that you are going to have to have the conversation with afterwards. And if you can live with that decision of simplifying the simplification of the complication, then that's fine in my books. We live to fight another day.